All right, so I'm here at a grocery store, 10 p.m. I got a couple cases that are not working. Turns out that C1B and C1C are not working. And you would think to yourself, well, why do you say that? Well, because if you go in here and you look the history, you can see, let's change this a little bit, okay? All right, hold on. All right, wait a second. Two minute intervals, I wanna see 30 minute intervals. Uh, yeah, this thing's not working. So, I'm going to try to walk through this call in real time with you guys, exactly everything that I do. Let's go find it. So here's where C1 starts. This is going to be C1A. Now I want to check airflow. First of all, C1A is one, two, three, four doors. C1B, okay? One, two, three, four, five doors for C1B. C1C, see? One, two, three, four, five doors. C1D is over here, see? And somebody else has been working on this. I'm not exactly sure what they were doing, but the manager told me that. But the thing is, is that I've got airflow everywhere. I've already checked all the doors. I've got airflow except on the fourth door of C1A. I got no air here. But I got air over here, which is the first door of C1B. See? And got air over here. I don't necessarily know if that's reading correctly. I don't think it is. Sometimes you can feel the food. It feels kind of soft. Don't know. Most of the time your food that's at the top will be uh, will be softer. I don't know, man. It's Frozen, frozen stuff is going to be pinche hard, man. It's going to be super hard. This isn't... Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Gotta get a thermometer. So this store is one of my regulars. You can check out the video I did a few months back on this here when I had to rebuild the drain line down there and I had to wash this nasty thing out and replace the liquid line solenoid valves in there, redo the drains. You can check it up. I'm going to put it in the corner up here for you. So, I'm going to get my thermometer, and I want to just verify the temperature on those cases. I want to make sure that they're actually reading what the controller's reading. I'm sure they will, but I just got to double check, you know. So then, if you look very carefully, very closely, you'll see a sticker on these cases that says El Sensor. That's where your sensor's at, in the cavity that the sticker is in. Now, I think that it's extremely unlikely that we have two sensors that are bad, but look at what's going on with my temperature. It's going down. This one is C1B, because we got the four door, C1A, C1B. I'm gonna let it marinate in there for a little bit. <laughs> marinate. And I'm gonna go check the rack, a couple other things. I'm gonna check the suction pressure on rack C. So, nothing has changed here. I still got for C1B, 10 degrees being red. C1C is still at seven and a half. C1D supposedly is at zero. C1A, 0 0.6. So I gotta find out what sensor is actually connected to what case, what circuit. There's only one way to do that. Gotta get my screwdriver and my nipple pinchers. Now then, many times the sensor will be right here. We'll, we'll actually, when we replace them, we'll put them up here and uh, it's just the same. 
but if not you got a screw right there another screw right there you take those out the panel comes out Whew, look at that <laughs> dude I just lost my short and stubby I cannot find it I cannot find it anywhere it's got to be right here in front of me too this gets annoying okay this is the wrong case I'm freaking working on C2 what the hell C1 so you know watch out for yourself man you can really get confused here see C1 a C1a is where my thermometer is at and C1a was showing right around zero degrees yeah yeah so this thermometer sensor is properly working okay C1b find el sensor on the five door cases it's gonna be the middle door no cover right there okay This one's reading right. It's not gonna go much further below 10. Okay. C1B is also showing correct. This one should be, so C1C should be somewhere around um, seven or six degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Seven or six degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay, five. Maybe it went down a little bit. Maybe the thermometer is a little off. I don't know, man. Three degrees is quite a difference. Or four degrees. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. My suction pressure when I went up there was, was uh, 15. And the set point was 15. So this one was showing to be 7.8 on the, on the monitor. So this one's actually reading four, de four degrees. Let's see if this thing, I'm gonna stick this in my mouth. All right, close enough. El sensor. Don't wanna put it in there wet, otherwise you'll get a wet bulb temperature. Maybe. I think this was the coldest case out of all of them on the computer. All right, just for S's and G's, let's go gander at the controller again. Now, looking back up here, C1A is good. Those are all good. Actually, C1A was the coldest one, so these are all measuring right. So, this whole circuit, the C circuit, it's not working very well, I think. that I need to check the screens and the expansion valves because my suction pressure's at target is 
good. It should be working. It should be working. And we've got other circuits that are doing well on this rack. Pulling down where they need to be. You see? Either that or maybe a low refrigerant issue. You can see. Nope. Let's have a gander at receiver level, 33%. All right, we're good there. So I'm going to tell the manager that I need those cases on the bottom emptied out. Normal. And I need to, to get down there and see what's going on with them expansion valves or a plug dryer if there's one dryer on the whole circuit. Now I'm bringing my tools and my gauges in. I'm gonna start by checking my, my superheat on C1D. Gotta get down to my suction tap, which is down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's blurry, but it's back there, yeah. Tell you what, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to doing all of your work. Holding the camera and getting good footage. Tell you what. All right, I'm connected suction line, suction line, and my suction line from there on the suction line. I need to verify this refrigerant. I think it's 448A, but I'm not sure. Let's go find out. So somewhere around these protocols, these are protocols. Whenever you hear me say protocol, I am referring to one of these. See? Protocol. Looks like we're still running 404. Ain't that something? Yeah, 404A. All right. So look at that, we're running a 38 degree superheat. I think for freezers, we need to be much lower than that. What you think? All right, so we're gonna do the easy part first. We're gonna pop this cap off and we're gonna adjust the adjustment screw. It's not a screw, it's a, it's a, but it's a screw. All right, so we're gonna adjust this stem, that's what I meant to say, stem, not screw. We're gonna turn this counterclockwise because we want to reduce superheat. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise one full turn, okay? One full turn. And we're gonna wait and see if this case gets to a lower temperature than what it was doing before, and we're gonna monitor how much of an improvement the superheat makes, if it makes an improvement at all. So, we do from 90 degree, or horizontal position. One, two, three, four. That's one full turn. So, I can hear it, it's feeding more now. And we're currently sitting at a 39 degree superheat with a 22 degree suction line. Just about a minute in, and my temperature is going down here. We're gonna need to see that line get down to like, shoot, we need to have less than 10 degrees of superheat for a low temperature system. So we need to see this get down into the negatives. Now you might think that I should go more than one turn at a time, which I might need to, but I've gotta wait for this to stabilize and get down to where it's, it's gotta stop. So let's say it goes to 10 and it stops there, you know, hangs out around 10. Then I know I probably need to go one more full turn or maybe three quarters of a turn. And I have three other cases to do it to. 
this is going to be C1C, so it might need two full turns if that's the issue. Maybe two full turns on this one, because it was running at 7 degrees. This is C1B. This was running at 10 degrees, maybe two and a half turns. Don't know. We'll see. And C1 was the coldest, so it might just need one full turn, depending on how much I have to do that one over there. Here in a minute, we're going to go check the protocol again and see if the temperature of this thing is actually going down below 2. I have a feeling it will. Oh, and also, this is the store that I did the video on um, boiler troubleshooting, if you remember. If not, you can check the video up here. I'm going to put it up there for you to click on if you want. Back at the protocol, my C1D is... 5.3 Hey, 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 okay C1D, 5.3 Let's click on it 4.7, drop in nice Go to history I'm going to change it From 30 minutes To 2 minutes, why not Okay so you can see, before I start messing with it, well, let's see. Uh, it was doing all right. Looks like 2.1 is the coldest it saw, and then for some reason, without even being open, it creeped up to 2.1, and then I started messing with it right around here. It rose up, because I had the doors open, and we're going back down, and it's dropping. 4.2 so we just hurry up and wait I hate waiting I'm gonna go start opening up the other cases temperature sitting at 11.6 now all right so I just cranked in another half turn because that kind of slowed down kind of hanging right around 10 and I guess that pretty damn good I guess huh so another half turn it's feeding more we will see. I've got access to my C1B now. See? Right there. So I know this one was running at 10. That one was running at zero. I adjusted that one one and a half turns and it's gonna be really close to where it needs to be. Maybe I have to adjust it another half turn. This one, I feel confident that I can adjust it. Probably two turns and I'm gonna be really, really close to where it needs to be on superheat. This one's a leaker. Alright, we'll go two turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll put this damn cap back on it because it's a leaker. Okay. And if you're going to use channel locks, make sure you just uh, don't strip the stuff out. Gotta squeeze them nice and tight. Here we go. So that was C1B. Now back at C1D, we're starting to fall again. Now I've got access provided by the manager for my C1C. I'm gonna crank this one one and a half turns. C1C. If you remember, this one was running at 7.8 degrees, so I think one and a half turns on this one will be good. And you know, there's a certain way you're supposed to hold channel locks. In case you didn't know, it's directional. So yeah, that's, that's how you hold them. You gotta do it to where you're turning that way so pay attention if you're gonna turn that way you got to put the channel locks on there like that and that's not the optimal grip you probably want to go one more channel like that that's more of an optimal per per perfect grip so that's to tighten to loosen you got to do like that and you got to pay attention when you're sideways or upside down or inverted you got to turn these the right direction that's uh, 
I don't know, less than number 500 or something. I don't know. Okay, one and a half, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I went a little far on the sixth one because I went a little short on the fifth one. Put it back. Okay. Tighten it back down. Notice the direction of the grip. Back at the protocols. Vamos a ver. C1D, negative 1.1. C1C is the one I just adjusted. We're gonna watch and watch and watch and watch. So you remember that C1B wouldn't get below 10. Let's look at the graph, or the history, not the graph. Let's see. History. See, look at that, okay. It would not drop below 10, look at all that. Now, finally, since I cranked that valve down, we're going down. 8.5. Now because I'm feeding more liquid into my circuits, I should see a small drop in my receiver level. Look at that. It was 33 earlier. Okay. Uh, that's pretty close, I guess. We might have a compressor not running. Hey. Okay, let's see. Compressors. C1 on. C2 off, no response. C3 on, no response. Got C3 not working. Why might that be? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that today because we're maintaining pretty close to capacity. I might save that service call, you know, for somebody else. Meanwhile, these are all dropping. My superheat on C1D was at seven degrees, so I'm gonna go check that. If I can get these to drop to negative five, I'll be happy. I'll call the job complete. Probably. Well, why half-ass it, I guess? Might as well get it to work pinch a good, you know? Back over here, I'm sitting at a six degree suction line temperature. I'm gonna crank it some more. I'm going to crank it one more full turn and see if that gets me down to a 10 degree superheat. Okay, so one full turn equals four quarter turns. Ooh, you can hear that. Yeah, let's see. Oh, and by the way, never force those when they get to the end of their uh when they get to the end and it stops don't force it seems like i probably could have saved a lot of time by just turning all these things like three turns c1 c one two three four oh and i think that's that's about the end of that one so that one's wide open C1B, the leaker. One more full turn. All right, so these cases should start dropping pretty quick. Let's go see. Here I got three degrees in dropping on C1D. 20 degrees super heat. So I'm at negative three degrees already on C1D. That's nice. I'm gonna watch these ones go down. All right, so we had 5.8 degrees it reached a little bit ago. This is the one that was C1B that was not getting below 10. Then I opened the door and adjusted it, went up to 6.4. At 6.4. This one at 8.7. Let's 
dropping. It's taking longer to drop. I suppose that if they're full of food, that would take it longer, you know, to drop because it takes a while because the load, you know. Let's see here. Bam! Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. My cases are coming down. Except that one. I haven't done anything with that one yet. I got to get the fan running on that one. So here I've got issues with the oil, oil management system. This whole time I was thinking that was my rack, but it's actually this one over here. This is rack C. This one over here is rack A. So never mind anything I said about that. Over here, what we got going on. Oil issue there. I don't think it's calling for these other ones to be on, but I know if I get my oil issue resolved down there, that uh, that I should be good. So my phone's only got 14%, guys. I'm gonna close this out. What I'll do is finish up what I need to do here. I'm gonna get my fan fixed on C1A. I'm gonna adjust that TXV down as far as I need to. And I'm gonna get all these cases over here down to where they need to be. And then I'm gonna call it a night, and then tomorrow I'll come back and address this. Bam, that thing. But that's gonna be it for this video. It's already long enough, so I want you guys to watch my I'm gonna try not to make them too long. So if you've made it this far, man, thanks a lot. Hit the bell. To get notifications anytime I make a video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, share this video. It would all help me so much. Appreciate you watching, and I'll see you later.